Test Amber speed. speed. Test Sound production, take one. I want to read you something that happened just a few hours ago, and it may have been because of the incredible reporting by Steve Helling. Let's talk about the People Magazine reporter, Stephen Helling. You know, I started speaking to, you know, as you and I both did, we tried to reach as many people as we could who used to work at, you know, the Mad Greek restaurant. And, you know, very few people wanted to talk, but I did end up speaking to somebody who worked there until recently who said that, yes, indeed, um, they did see Brian Koberger come there a couple of times, at least twice. Um, you know, and the only reason why he stood out was not because he was being creepy, not because he was doing anything weird, but he's uh, such a strict vegan that he was requiring that he wanted to make sure that all of his food had not come in contact with animal products. So that's why he stood out because he had a special request with his order. If this Helen guy made these stories up, shame on him. Shame on him because you are victimizing the four victims' families by creating fake news stories for clicks and views purposely. And yes, you know, he, he was there. We don't know who waited on him. We don't know if that's where he met, you know, a couple of the victims. But we know that he at least went there to eat a couple of times. Hmm. There's something wrong with your story, but I can't put my finger on it. Fake news. Here's what's interesting. I think it was a, an aunt uh, or an uncle or maybe a couple of aunts of Brian Koberger who said many weeks ago that one of the, the strange um, personality traits that their nephew had was that he did not want to eat out of any pots that had once been used to even cook meat. So he had that tendency in the family in Pennsylvania that his vegan diet was so strict, he had to have new pots. They bought new pots and pans if he was going to be coming for dinner. Um, so this kind of is in line with what this employee was telling you. You are victimizing the four victims' families by creating fake news stories for clicks and views purposely. People magazine report claims that suspect Idaho, suspected Idaho killer Brian Koberger visited a restaurant where two of the victims worked in the weeks leading up to their murders. Also that he followed the, the three female victims on Instagram and repeatedly messaged one of them. Now the restaurant owner has since said that Koberger never, did, never visited the restaurant. Joining us now to discuss former CIA officer, FBI special agent Tracy Walder. Tracy, thank you so much for being here. Thank you for having me, Natasha. So this report from People Magazine says that investigators are aware of Koberger's trips to the restaurant. People also confirming the social media account that appeared to be owned by Koberger followed the three female victims. This report from People Magazine says that investigators are aware of Koberger's trips to the restaurant. People also confirming the social media account that appeared to be owned by Koberger followed the three female victims. Why would the restaurant owner deny that the, re the report there and say that it's not true? <laughs> This report from People Magazine says that investigators are aware of Koberger's trips to the restaurant. People also confirming the social media account that appeared to be owned by Koberger followed the three female victims. Right, because that's exactly the same thing. And there's a difference between people on the on YouTube speculating about the case and putting out speculation. There's a big difference between that and someone 
creating fake news, purposely, willfully, and willfully and knowingly putting out fake information. Fake news. And there's a difference between people on the on YouTube speculating about the case and putting out speculation. There's a big difference between that and someone creating fake news, purposely, willfully, and willfully and knowingly putting out fake information. I interview a mother who tells shocking info about that morning. Her daughter says by 10 a.m. she already knew the details of the incident on 1122 King Road. She knew. She'd known since like 10. Dylan and Bethany were in the downstairs room. Dylan saw them out the window. They're lying. Now you're talking about a quadruple, you know, horrible story, which I don't think that anybody should really be looking to, you know... See, you have to wonder, why would this woman want to be giving a bunch of YouTube channels, right? Because apparently, hey, I mean, the mainstream media is saying that we're the bottom of the barrel. YouTubers, we're the bar bottom of the barrel information. I interview a mother who tells shocking info about that morning. Her daughter says by 10 a.m. she already knew the details of the incident on 1122 King Road. She knew. She'd known since like 10. Dylan and Bethany were in the downstairs room. Dylan saw them out the window. They're lying. Fake news. Do they come? They're going to come to us. And use, you know, our footage. They're, they're going to record us. They're going to chase us. Why? Because we're irrelevant? No. Because we're your story, we're your, we're your golden nugget. For that, the mainstream media, it doesn't, hold, it doesn't hold water. Okay? So the mainstream media does rely on YouTubers. Can't have it both ways. But this woman chose YouTubers over, are you going to say that she chose YouTubers over going to tabloids, over going to reputable um, journalists, over reputable TV producers? Okay. I have never heard someone say so many wrong things, one after the other, consecutively in a row. You can't trust second-hand information from a peddler of lies. It's beginning to smell a lot like bullshit.